If the CIA are afraid of these people, you probably should be too. I'm your host Yusuf, and these are the top 10 scary people the CIA feared the most. Make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell so you get notified whenever we upload a new video. Anyways, let's get scared. At number 10, Oleksandr Vitalyevich Yaromenko. The man, also known as ZL0M and Lamarez, is responsible for three main things according to the Secret Service. A. He hacked into the computer networks of MarketWired, PR Newswire, and BusinessWire. B. He stole confidential press releases containing material non-public information from the victim companies' internal computer networks prior to their public release. And C, he traded ahead of the material non-public information contained in the stolen releases before its distribution. The current reward on the man's head is $1 million for information leading to the arrest and or conviction of Radchenko and Yaromenko for participating in transnational organized crime. And number nine, Daniil Patekin. Daniil Patekin and Dmitry Vadimovich Karasavidi launched a sophisticated phishing campaign targeting users of multiple digital currency exchanges. Patekin and Karasavidi purchased and deployed multiple web domains that appeared to be websites belonging to legitimate digital currency exchanges. However, when users logged into these fraudulent websites, Patekin and Karasavidi were able to steal the user's credentials, enabling the defendants to control the actual digital currency exchange accounts, withdraw some or all of the victim's digital currency, and manipulate the market for digital currency. At number eight, another hacker, Roman Sergeyevich Kotov. Roman Kotov and other co-conspirators operated a prolific hacking organization that was responsible for several of the largest known data breaches. Among other exploits during that period, the defendants and their co-conspirators penetrated the secure computer network of several of the largest payment processing companies, retailers, and financial institutions in the world, and stole the personal identifying information of others. At number seven, Rashad Lamar Tulloch. On July 5th, 2018, a federal grand jury in Lexington, Kentucky, returned a 24 count indictment, charging 15 foreign nationals with racketeering influenced and corrupt organizations act, RICO conspiracy, wire fraud conspiracy, money laundering conspiracy, and aggravated identity theft. The charges stem from the defendant's alleged roles in an international organized crime group based primarily in Alexandria, Romania, that defrauded American victims through online auction fraud, causing millions of dollars in losses. At number six, Fedor Rofovich Manikin. Manikin recruited and maintained a network of money mules, often visiting foreign students who opened bank accounts in their own names in the United States for the purpose of receiving laundered money and sending it to Russia. Manikin used his network of mule accounts to offer cash out services for illicitly obtained funds from bank account takeovers, enabling the perpetrators to wire the illicit funds into the mule accounts. Mannequin notified the mules and their handlers of the timing and amounts of wire transfers of money from victim bank accounts into the mule bank accounts, directed them to make cash withdrawals from the mule bank accounts, and provided the dollar amounts, names, and locations of persons to whom the illicit funds should be sent. At number five, Ahmed Yassin Abdul Ghani. Ahmed Yassin Abdul Ghani managed the daily operations of Liberty Reserve between approximately 2006 and 2009. Liberty Reserve operated as a criminal bank payment processor designed to help users conduct illegal transactions anonymously and launder the proceeds of their crimes. It emerged as one of the principal money transfer agents used by cyber criminals in the world to distribute, store, and launder illicit proceeds. At number four, Mikhailo Sergeyevich Ridikov. Ridikov offered bulletproof hosting services, which is leasing servers from which law enforcement supposedly could not gain access or obtain information to his co-conspirators. Ridikov's bulletproof hosting services included frequently changing the locations of hacking platforms, erasing the contents of hacking platforms on short notice, accepting false credentials to register and lease hacking platforms, and discouraging internet service providers, ISPs, from deactivating hacking platforms suspected of illegal activity. As a result of this conduct, financial institutions, credit card companies, and consumers suffered hundreds of millions of US dollars in losses. At number three, Alexei Volodymyrovich Bistrov. Alexei Volodymyrovich Bistrov and his co-conspirators fraudulently obtained the online banking login credentials belonging to numerous customers of a US financial institution. Using those credentials without the knowledge or authorization of the rightful account holders, Bistrov and his associates set up ACH, automated clearing house links, between those victim accounts and destiny destination accounts controlled by Bistrov and his associates. In doing so, Bistrov and his co-conspirators falsely represented themselves as the legitimate customers of the U.S. financial institution, subsequently caused and attempted to cause said U.S. financial institution to execute wire transfers into bank accounts controlled by Bistrov and his associates. Furthermore, Bistrov and his co-conspirators changed the verification phone numbers and verification email addresses on the victim accounts to phone numbers and email accounts under the control of the fraudsters. At number two, Egbe Tony Iyamu. 
Ekbe Tony Iyamu is a member of the Cape Town, South Africa-based chapter of the Neo-Black Movement of Africa criminal organization, also known as Black Axe. From at least 2011 until 2021, Iyamu and other members of Black Axe worked together to engage in widespread internet fraud involving romance scams and advanced fee scams. The conspirators used social media websites, online dating websites, and voiceover internet protocol phone numbers to find and talk with victims in the United States while using a number of aliases. At number one, the co-conspirator of her number 10 spot. Radchenko and Yaromenko's scheme focused on stealing annual, quarterly, and current reports of publicly traded companies before the reports were disseminated. Many of the stolen reports contained material non-public information concerning, among other things, the earnings of the companies. Radchenko and Yaromenko sought to profit illegally from the scheme by selling access to the non-public information contained in these yet-to-be disclosed reports and by trading the securities of the company before the investing public learned the same information. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video if you found it interesting and we'll see you next time.